And for those of you who are here again as you were last year, you remember we stood up as we'll sit, God willing, tomorrow on this podium and have a debate on some of these matters. I was on a podium last year here, and Doug Millar stood up and commanded control over the entire thing, claiming again falsely that I am a Knight of Malta, and claiming all this again to kind of like put the heat on yours truly. So we're going to return some of that heat tonight and this weekend. So in this list, the list was circulated by Benjamin Fulford, and then he, what he did was he took the list before he circulated it and put it in the last report of Edward Harley, a.k.a. Christopher Story. And Christopher Story was actually assassinated, and this was his last report before he was killed. And he talks about the people that would be involved in his assassination, including the Bush-Cheney cartel, and he also blamed Fulford for somebody who would be involved in his assassination. So Fulford took this, this doctored list from Greg Zemanski and he put it in this fake, nights, uh, this fake report of Christopher's story, circulated it all over the internet. So you're dealing with a double forgery. You're dealing with, first of all, taking Zemanski and Alias, and all of these guys operate with at least a half a dozen aliases. And that's why when they start attacking you as a, quote, dissident, and you start to receive emails from these folks, it's not just, you know, it, it seems like there's 36 out there that are attacking you. There's a whole movement to attack you. And it's really about a half a dozen, maybe at most 10 guys that are out there with a number of different aliases. So I tried to contact Greg Zemanski and get a comment from him on why he would do this. And he didn't respond to me, but I saw Truat was actually, Dr. Truat was out there with Greg Zemanski and talking to him about Dr. Horowitz and saying, yes, he thought he was. He said, oh, well, he came to my lab and my lab right. was um, actually um, invaded by the FDA. The FDA. Okay, was, so, so let me get back. We've got a double forgery that was now spread. And my office starts to get phone calls. We have some fantastic customers, very loyal. All of a sudden, they start calling it. What? We don't want to do business with you anymore. Dr. Horowitz is a Knight of Malta. Well, where did you read that? Suddenly now, the world's leading financial industries whistleblower is assassinated. And in his last report, the forgery is placed into it. So you've got a double forgery. You've got a double altered document. Zemanski, alias Eric Samuelson, took some Knights of Malta list, God knows where he got it from, threw my name in there, and then that's the first forgery, sends it to his buddy over in Japan, Benjamin Fulford, good friends of David Rockefeller et al., and Harley, this financial industry's whistleblower, says to all of us about two months before he's assassinated, the Bushes want to kill me, and Fulford has issued an assassination threat against me. Fulford then circulates Zemanski's Knights of Malta list to bring Horowitz into the murder of the world's leading financial industry's whistleblower. And I mean, Dr. Horowitz's name stood out like a sore thumb on that list. It was between people like Henry Kissinger, the Bushes, Richard Nixon. It's like, I mean, it's just like Dr. Leonard Horowitz. It's anybody that you know, had half a brain would be able to see that unless, of course, they were involved. But in that's it. it. The fact is we've got no more brains left. <laughs> we are brain dead. And if you simply, you know, all you have to do, anybody reasonable, intelligent person, would take a look at the history. Where did these guys come from? Or where did Horowitz come from? You could go on the internet, you could track me where I was, went to high school, where I went to Rutgers University, where I went to Harvard University, where I went to Eastman Dental Center, University of Rochester, and then you could start to study my scientific reports. I've got about three dozen that tell you exactly what I've been publishing and what I've been involved in. All humanitarian, wonderful projects. I was never in the CIA. All of these guys pretty much were involved in CIA. They tell you right up front that they were involved in FBI and CIA and they were engaged in all this stuff. And for folks like Doug Millar, I don't even know if he finished high school, quite frankly, the way he writes. <laughs> so 
so I finally I got in touch with Dr. Trua and I reached him by telephone. It was one time and he, he, I said, he said to me, well, it was my comment on there and I believe that. And I said, well, can you send that to me by email? So he sends me an email, but he doesn't send me his response to my question. He sends me an email with other people copied on it, asking whether Dr. Horowitz is a Knight of Malta and a whole bunch of other libels listed on it. So here's where the message goes out to the team, so, to the team of players. So copied on this email was Timothy Patrick White, who is a felon. He's actually the guy that was responsible, according to a few different people that know him, as somebody who worked in Vietnam as the person that would stuff the American soldiers' bodies and caskets with drugs. He's also a known felon. He's known to have raped people. He's got a huge record involving lots of drugs and lots of different crimes. He's also a uh, pretty well-known cross-dresser, which I don't have anything against. I love cross-dressers, but this guy is definitely not a good representative. You should tell him the story about what happened when he called. <laughs> okay, so uh, again, this is the bar this is the barking dog. They've all got to have some sort of a mean, you know, ferocious-looking character to intimidate all of their targets, you see. So that's what the role by Timothy Patrick White has played. And Sherry is an extraordinary person. Again, one of the reasons why I love her dearly is because she doesn't back down, and she's such a good investigator that she digs up. If you start to attack Sherry Kane, watch out, <laughs> baby, watch out. So she started to investigate who this man is and his background. So, so he calls to basically threaten her. Well, he called because I guess he might have heard something on a radio show because Truot first sends me this letter with Greg Zemanski, Timothy Patrick White, and Eric John Phelps copied on it. And then after that I get a call from Timothy Patrick White on my cell phone after I think we were on a radio show and we talked about this whole episode and he said basically he had, he, he first he <laughs> he actually, they're, they're all misogynists. Most of these guys, if you've looked at what Anthony Hilder just put out about me, you Tell can know what that means. Most people the misogynists, the chauvinists, they really don't appreciate women. They don't respect them, and they believe that women are inferior to men. So they've also bought into that lie, or they know the truth, but they're really continuing to promote that lie. This is the biggest division between mankind is the division of man and woman before anything else is, the, is you've been lied to if you look at the insect world praying mantis actually will mate and then will eat the head of the male I mean the, the, in, the black widow the the queen bee I mean so you know it's all you all been lied to we've been lied to it's an individual thing there's no superior <laughs> I thought I thought you so guys that, appreciate don't that. Don't you love her? I mean, it's like the truth is. So so he calls up to threaten me. He says that uh, he first he calls me on my cell and he says, "Is this Lenny's whore?" And I said, "And yeah." And I said, "And who would this be?" And he said, "Oh, this is Timothy Patrick White." And he said, "And I have this audio sex tape of you and Dr. Horowitz, and I'm going to blast it all over the internet if you guys don't shut up." <laughs> and I said, "Really, you have that?" I said, "I would love to hear it myself." Eventually, we did hear it. It sounded like it actually sounded like Tabby Faye Baker and uh, and some other guy with a southern accent, and they were all talking about eating a sandwich or something. It was like, I was like, "Wow, that would have been my idea of a sex tape," but. <laughs> And, and so um, he so he call, so he says that, and I said, well, if anybody's a whore, it's you, Timothy Patrick White, because first of all, I heard you like to dress like a whore, and you know what else that probably means that you like to get a big black dildo up your ass. <laughs> so you should have seen how fast she got off the phone. He the was line, freaked out. The phone went dead. <laughs> All of his buddies that were listening in, because that's what they do, he was totally embarrassed by the truth that shall set everybody free. <laughs> he never called me back again. Never called back again. And he's really known to be like a real terrorist in the scene. Uh, so after that, I got an email from Truat from Dr. Truat, who by the way isn't a real doctor, we checked his credentials, he said he went to the American College in Washington DC. And, and check it out, American College of Washington DC, you know it comes up when you do a Google search, but for dumbed down people like so many out there, uh, the reality is it's a professional membership organization for doctors only. 
where you have to get then certifi you get certification for continuing education from the American College of Washington, D.C. You don't have diplomas provided to doctors to create doctors or PhDs, as Truat Olsley claims he has from the American College. So he sent me an email, and in the email, he again threatened me with the same thing that Timothy Patrick White threatened, me, threatened us with, was a sex audio tape. He said, I'm going to, you know, you've discredited yourself, Sherry Kane. And then he mentioned I had an alias, and I looked up how he got this alias. He looked up uh, a Google search under Los Angeles and found a Sherry Kane in Los Angeles that was 53 years old, and now her name was like Temkin Kenselberg. It's like the most Jewish name he could have found on the internet that belonged to a girl named Sherry Kane. And this, this whole concept now, a major co-intel pro-operation, and I've suspected it for a long time, but I never had the evidence like we have now. This whole Zionistic and Jew world order concept that we're engaged in, you know, gee whiz, I'm sure that there are Jews, as we see them all the time infiltrating the media, as well as the White House, as well as the accounting, as well as the banksters. And yes, I can even say for sure that if you have an understanding of the royalty, the bloodlines, the House of Windsor, and you understand that the tribe of Judah, wherein the term Jew is derived, you realize that there's probably, and still the royalty of England, are probably Jewish because they were the guys that created the Roman Catholic Church. And they were the guys that then created the Protestant movement in the King James era. So, okay, so if we accept that there are Jews involved, does that mean we have to now put out all of this hideous Jew-hating propaganda that's consistent with KKK and the crap, literal crap, that Eric John Phelps is putting out and claiming that who's the Vatican assassins, it's all of these Jews who are running everything. Now you've got the Jeff Rences of the world supporting that and feeding that, and you've got all these other people. Where is the love? Where is the solution? Where is the concept of we the people, we're human beings? You've got two Jews standing here and saying, when can we have peace on earth and celebrate love? Does it matter if I was black or Muslim? Would it matter if I was a woman instead of a man? The concept of dumbing us down to be mind control slaves and spiritually suppressed is intimately connected to this issue of giving peace a chance. And we can't have peace without the, with this division that they are creating and they're constantly creating this hate and division as I said it's the biggest lie is the the lie of man and woman but it's also a l lies within the religion within all the things that we are nationality everything that we are as people and if we don't if we don't come to terms with the fact that we all come from one we come from a God that loves us all, then we'll never have peace on earth. So it starts with us. If we are the activists, if we are the, the face of activism in the world, and we are to make a difference because people are looking to us. We are the future. We are the people that are ahead of our time. We've always been ahead of our time. And we are the only ones that can make that difference. So if we fall into this whole lie about Zionism is to blame for everything, it's the Jews, it's the Christians, it's the Muslims, it's the the women, it's the men, we're all part of it, the problem and not the solution. So we all need to get to that point where we can agree to that. And, so the know. concept of Eric John Phelps, where does the ideology, when you study the propaganda, there's a theology of hate. There's a theology of division. And this theology, I guess it, I think the clearest uh, ideologue is Eric John Phelps and his ideologue clone, his psychophant called Craig Oxley, who is very active on the internet to spread this propaganda, and they claim to be Bible believers. They claim to be engaged in some sort of a pseudo-Christian thing, but it's not. It literally, when you start to study, starts to go right into the literal Church of Satan and the Temple of Set. And this now brings you into current news.